Hi everyone, so we're going to continue now with topic 6D where we're going to discuss um, this concept of calorimetry and then as well as enthalpy. So just a reminder from prior topics, you know, uh, what we've kind of talked about up to this point is the idea that in chemistry, one of the goals that we want to be able to do is to calculate delta E, which is, remember, the change in the internal energy for a chemical reaction. And the reason we want to do this is because the value of delta E tells us about the structural changes in the molecules uh, that occur during a reaction. And of course, if we have that structural information, uh, that becomes very useful because then it's very much like having a movie in front of us of how the molecules convert from reactants to products and knowing that allows us to be able to make predictions of what's going to happen for other reactions of similar types uh, in, in other experiments. So to calculate delta E, as I, I mentioned before, we need to measure two um, properties. Uh, one is called work and the other one is called heat and they have symbols W and Q, lowercase letters. And the reason for this is because we've discussed this in the first topic 6a where we say that there are only two methods of transferring energy and that's through work and through heat. And so if we are able to measure both of these components, work and heat, we can add them together to give us delta E. Now in prior sections uh, what I've talked about is how we can uh, calculate W and Q assuming that we can measure uh, certain properties. So W is given by this equation negative P external delta V. So assuming that we know we, uh, you know, we have tools that can measure delta V change in volume and uh, pressure external, we can then uh, combine those two numbers together and then calculate our W. And Q remember is given by C delta T uh, alternatively, it could also be given as MC sub S delta T or NC sub M delta T. So again, assuming that we can measure delta T, we can uh, measure M and we can measure C sub S, then multiplying all these three numbers together would give us our Q. Okay, So that's what we're going to talk about in this section is how we can make measurements of these quantities. Um, and you know how they can then be used to calculate delta E. So again, as a as a summary, you know, equation. I just want to say that really what we want in the end is delta E, which is Q plus W, and Q is M C delta T, W is negative P external delta V, and adding these two quantities together give us the delta E. Okay, so um, let's now talk about how we can actually measure these quantities. As we talked about uh, just now in terms of W, if we want to measure W, we basically need a setup where uh, we have a reaction container or reaction vessel that uh, has a movable piston. So if you remember when we talk about work uh, a couple of topics ago, I mentioned this idea that if you were to carry out a reaction like this, which is a reaction that uh, produces gas and therefore can do expansion work, if we were to connect that reaction uh, in this flask to a movable piston. So here's your piston and it moves uh, freely up and down. And so if the reaction produces gas and it, the gases can expand uh, or does expansion work, then if you have a movable piston then you can calculate the change in volume that occurs as a result of this uh, expansion of the gas and as a result you can calculate your W, your work. Um, I just want to mention here that this is generally not something that people do because um, as it turns out that uh, there's several reasons. One of the reasons being that it's just, you know, not very convenient to uh, want to do this, to, to want to uh, carry out reactions in, in the containers where there's movable piston. Uh, the other, um, uh, an, another reason for this is, as you'll see later on, is a lot of times actually most reactions that we care about they don't have a huge work component to them. So as a result, a lot of times the work component uh, is negligible or the value of work done by that uh, reaction is negligible. Uh, and for reactions where the value of work is actually significant, we have uh, a method that allows us to basically ignore the volume change. 
okay? And we'll talk about that in a second, but just suffice it for you to know at this point that, you know, basically we don't really usually measure W in uh, a setup that looks like this. Uh, but what we do, though, is we usually measure Q, okay? We do measure Q because Q is relatively easy to measure because, remember, in order to get Q, you just need C delta T, and delta T is easily measured using a thermometer because you just measure a change in temperature. So you put in a thermometer at the beginning of the reaction, and you leave the thermometer in at the end of the reaction, record another temperature, then you have your delta T, okay? So this is the um, conclusion I want to point out here is that in practice what we measure is heat of reaction. We don't really measure the work of a reaction. We measure the heat of the reaction. And the science of heat measurement is called calorimetry. So the question then is, you know, how is the uh, heat of reaction that we measure, the Q, related to delta E? Because don't forget that what we're looking for is delta E. We're not looking for Q, but because of convenience, a lot of times what we measure is Q. So, there, in order to talk about how Q is related to delta E, we have to kind of understand how Q itself can be measured. So, there are two ways you can measure heat of reaction, or Q. You can measure it under constant volume, or you can measure it under constant pressure. And um, I'm going to just work on a, a separate, on a, you know, scratch paper now to show you what quantities we get if we were to measure heat under uh, constant volume versus constant pressure. Okay, so let's look at this equation again. So remember that initially we started with this equation, which is delta E is equal to Q plus W. That everybody hopefully understands at this point. There's two methods of energy transfer, and they all add up to give you your delta E of the reaction. Now remember what I just said, what we're going to measure is Q, not delta E, so if we rearrange this equation to solve for Q, what we get is Q is equal to delta E minus W. We know that the only type of work that we're going to consider for chemical reactions is this thing called the expansion work, which is equal to negative P external times delta V, right? So W itself is negative P external delta V. Now, since you have negative in front of it, when you multiply that negative with the other negative, then what you get is a positive. So then Q itself is just delta E plus P external times delta V, okay? So once we get it to this point, what I want to highlight is two, again, the two different ways that you measure um, Q. Under constant volume, okay, under constant volume, if you think about the term constant volume, what that means is, of course, that volume doesn't change. If volume doesn't change, that means delta V is equal to zero, okay? If delta V is equal to zero, as you can see here, if delta V is equal to zero, then this whole term disappears, and you're left with just delta E on the right side of the equation. So in other words, when you measure Q at constant volume, which is given the symbol Q sub V, what you get automatically is just your delta E, which is the quantity you're looking for. Remember, that's what we're originally looking for. So in other words, what this is kind of a, a clever way of avoiding having to measure work, right? If we just somehow make a container where the volume doesn't change, we pretty much avoid having to uh, measure this component and whatever we just need to measure heat and the heat that we measure is automatically our delta E okay and we'll talk about how we can do this uh, later uh, on in the next video now the second uh, type of measurement that's often done in fact most of the measurements done this way is something called a constant uh, pressure uh, heat measurement okay so in other words here what you get is Q measured under constant pressure now if you're measuring this under constant pressure you don't really get the benefit uh, that you got earlier with constant volume, which is that all of a sudden this quantity disappears. So in other words, if you measure heat under constant pressure, you get the same thing, which is just Q sub P, now it's called heat measured under pr constant pressure. And that quantity is still um, this quantity earlier that I wrote up here, which is delta E plus P external times delta V, okay? Now this uh, type of heat that's measured under constant pressure is given a special uh, name, special symbol as well. So the symbol is delta H, okay? 
and the name of this is called the change in enthalpy. So instead of internal energy, this quantity H is referred to as enthalpy. So Q sub P, which is heat measured under constant pressure, is equal to delta H, and delta H is equal to delta E plus P external times delta V. Okay. So, you know, just to kind of uh, remind, you know, summarize this information now. So if you're measuring heat under constant volume, then what you get is this quantity called Q sub V, which as I just showed in the scratch paper uh, earlier, it was basically just equal to delta E, which is the component they were looking for. However, when you're measuring under constant pressure, you get this other quantity called delta H, and delta H is not equal to delta E, but it's equal to delta E minus work, where the work itself, of course, is negative P external delta V, so then when you combine the whole terms together, you get this quantity, which is that delta H is equal to delta E plus P external delta V. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about what it is about delta H. Why, why is it useful to measure, right? Because again, going back to the idea, we want this quantity, not delta H. So then the question is, how is delta H related to delta E? Uh, and why don't we just make measurements all with the constant volume system? Why do we have to make measurements with constant pressure? And we'll talk about that uh, in the next video.